Hello, guys and gals. Me and Mudahar, and welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I got my co-host Oompaville. Nux Taku is currently missing, which works really well for our guest Keemstar because of their uh, thank God great he's relationship gone. With- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the great relationship with each other. Jesus Christ. Well, uh, I want to start off with Keem. Uh, obviously, you've been doing a million things so far. There's a uh, one pressing matter I want to talk to before we get into. Before we get into all of that, I want to ask you what your thoughts are on the Lolcow podcast that you're launching, which is something I have a lot of interest in myself. Because So I had this idea, parties. I want to say close to maybe a year now, now ago, of um, getting all the guys that get a lot of attention uh, but don't necessarily have fans. Um, you know, Lolcow's obviously, Wings, Boogie, and DSP, getting them on a podcast. Uh-huh. I thought that would be really entertaining beneficial to uh to them and to the people that hate them and love to hate watch them because if you think about it when you go on tiktok when you go on to any of these short form youtube shorts or any of that what is it it's all podcast clips here and there imagine all these mini little clips of wing saying stupid stuff dsp yeah. buggy i mean that would have been brilliant right uh yeah. but unfortunately it didn't happen due to you know dsp being mentally it and like being Jesus so hard Christ. to work with like it just it never took off so um we now got tommy c in the place of dsp and tommy c is kind of playing a role of like <laughs> like really messing with boogie the, and, the uh, wrangler i guess you could say the wrangler but he's also like egging on a lot of stuff w- with them and uh I, there is a test pilot that i've reviewed and watched um and, and it's good it's good i think it's a good show um but i'm way more hands off than the uh than the original idea with uh dsp i would have been way more involved in this i'm just kind of letting them do their own thing and i'm promoting it you know okay cool well well i i, I would i i actually really because i because i follow all these people i don't even think i would consider like wings of, or wings of redemption a low count anymore after that like boxing round that he had uh he really came out and proved to be like a real yeah, like, that was pretty a awesome chat out of all things that was yeah. pretty cool I, I mean i respect anybody willing to get into the fucking ring you know and put put hands down and you know prove their metal so I, I really don't even see him getting a whole lot of shit anymore for it so i just like anything wings of redemption related and wings has always been like one of those characters that if you've been in the community as long as me came and really oompa has as well too because you've been around for that era of content creation yeah. you know the name wings of redemption you know oh, yeah. the whole story there pk episode always- 14 baby that's when i jumped in Dude, i used to I, watch I- woody's mail mondays every every monday Dude, that was that was a that was a period of that was like that was that that was actually peak content for all of us that early content yeah. era. I learned that a lot. Trolling era. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that I, was a that was a fun time. It, it, we've seen all these guys um, be down, right? Be sad and mm-hmm. you know beg for money and be pathetic. And um, it's not just that Wings got in the ring and won. It's that Wings walked out singing a Kid Rock you know song right and with with all the all the arrogance and confidence and he's just like this this event somehow turned him into uh turned him into just a more respectable person all all around and the fans noticed it the haters noticed it you know there's these uh hate youtube channels that always talk shit about wings and they started getting hate all of a sudden the comments are all oh you guys are pathetic why are you trying to you know go against wings bettering his life and doing something good so it's been really good for him boogie uh i guess it's been good for him he's got a girlfriend fresh out of high school um (laughs) (laughs) jesus christ how old is she I don't. He says don't that she's know? twenty. He says oh, okay, that she's okay, twenty. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Keeps like Jesus. the California record keeping department. Here. I know somebody <laughs> in your comments the is like hypocrite. It's like bro, the the women that I dated in their twenties look like women. <laughs> His girlfriend looks like fourteen. Yeah, that was a. Uh, I'll, I'll be when I first saw that on the on the old uh, timeline. I was a little weirded out. Um, I mean, on a personal level, I don't really get age gaps like that. That's just me. Like, I really keep things relegated to, like, my rule is, like, five years, you know, beyond and below, you know? Like, that's kind of my thing because it's within my generation. Um, I'm one of those people who are like, hey, if you're over the age of 18, you know, God bless. Go do whatever you want. Now, like, a 50-year-old guy, nearly 50. I think he's, like, 48. And then, like, this... 
I, I 20 is what I heard. It's, I think what's so weird to me is like how they bond. It's like they said that they bonded over trauma or something. And I find that to be really icky, you know, like it's just one of those things where it's like, what, what do you really talk about? That That's just the nature of it kind of weirds me out. But Pe- hey, you people know, are upset about um, age gaps is a relatively new thing. If you like look throughout, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my mom's recent, eight years older than my dad. If you look through modern recent history, the age gap has never been an issue until like the last five years. <laughs> All of a sudden, like look at Leonardo uh, DiCaprio. He's been dating girls in their 20s forever. It's only over the last like, what, three years that people have been having an issue with it. It's just strange. Yeah. I mean, my parents have a have a decent age gap. What is, but, your, uh, what is your parents difference? Mine is probably like six, I think. My mom's eight years it, older which, than my dad. Yeah, which is, my my parents' age gap isn't really that bad because obviously they, um, this was like well, my mom was in like what like her in second third year of college when it all kind of started. So my mm-hmm. dad was already starting his residency at the time. So Frank Sinatra yeah. has boogie beat. Like when he was in his fifties, he like uh, married a twenty one year old. Listen, Hugh Hefner has everyone beat, okay? That motherfucker was 89 years of age. Didn't, uh, didn't a couple rock stars, like, adopt women? What? Didn't, no, okay, uh, didn't I did not know Steven, that. I don't, I don't want to say this could be illegal to say. Didn't Steven Tyler adopt a girl? Let's see. Steven, Steven Tyler I know adopts. Woody, uh, whatever his name is, Woody Harrelson. No, not Woody Harrelson. I'm thinking the wrong thing. Woody um, Allen. Yeah, Woody Allen. He's yeah, that's freaky. That is yeah, Woody so Allen's weird. A illegal. Dude. Steven Woody... Tyler was 27. He adopted Julia Holcomb in 1973. Damn. That's yeah. Fucking... Go ahead, Kim. What were you saying? Yes, yeah, he adopted the the woman that he the 16 year old girl. Yeah, he adopted a 16 year old. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's good. She like. <laughs> <laughs> See, that that uh, uh that's I, weird. I, like saying that's disgusting is like actually a fucking understatement but woody allen like he was saying woody allen's a fucking creepy fucking yeah he I hate a, woody allen he adopted yeah. like uh mm. an, an asian girl at a very small age and then started dating her when she became an adult <laughs> yeah he yeah. like groomed her into being his his girlfriend very strange so strange yeah and it, it, and it's funny because like not many people really even bring that up or talk about it. So I'm glad you guys are mentioning it too. Cause I don't really hear too, like if I mentioned Woody Allen to random people, that's not like the topic that ever comes up, you know, he hasn't been EDP four, four or five yet. Is something, something even stranger than that though has to be. And it's a recent story that boys. Oh, oh yeah, dude, oh dude, my I, God, bro, love, I, I love this so much. Okay, okay. I, oh my God, I'm all, all right, in. Hold on, hold on, hold I'm on, all hold on. in. Caleb, Caleb, you have to, you have to, you have to bring our audience up to oh, speed with man. the Island Boys. Okay, so the Island Boys, everybody knows the Island Boys, right? They had that stupid yeah. song, I'm Island Boy, and and it went super viral. They became irrelevant very quickly. They got, uh, they walked off Logan Paul's podcast. That was kind of like the last big thing that they did. And then they started, uh, they started an OnlyFans, as one does, and uh, they started kissing each other, like in June, right? They just like did one video where they kissed each other, and it was the origins of it. I'm not really exactly sure if it was just out of like brotherly love. Oh, it's just something something we should record, or if they knew exactly what they were doing. But that's when the, it, it 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 struck up a it struck a nerve with the public, and and um, their OnlyFans kind of got a boost from them literally kissing each other as twin brothers. And now they've gone from kissing to um, uh, sucking each other. Okay. 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 Let me, let me, yeah, exactly. I just, I wanted to, I wanted to clarify. I don't want to say anything slanderous, but I mean, they literally released the video (laughs) of it censored though. Mm -hmm. So, well, which I'm Keemstar from Drum Alert, so I'm just gonna go for it. I think they're butt fucking each other. Like I think it's full on fucking bro. They're they made a sex tape. Do you know about this? Wait, what? They yeah. made With a each sex other? tape. With each other? The, the the I their manager claims that. I've heard that before. It hasn't been released yet, but they have screenshots oh, of one dude. on their knees and the other one standing up. And they put the screenshots out saying, "Sex tape coming soon." I love that. Dude, isn't that illegal in their state? Like, yeah, I know Florida, it's Florida. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I think that's I think that's illegal most 
parts but of the country. I right? think it's only I think it's only actual penetration. Though I don't think I don't think it's illegal to just like like <laughs> you know I don't think fellatio for your I don't think fellatio is illegal. Bro, that's penetration. Like in a legal court of law, that's I feel bad that's... for your editors. They're gonna be like beep beep beep. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they're 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 not gonna have that much of a fun time. But I mean, at least they'll get a laugh out of this discussion. True. The, the Dude, thing about I'm the all thing in about on those boys. The thing about those island boys, man, it's just like this is the last. It's like I was watching Charlie's video about it too, and he's like, it's literally the final like nuclear option for these people. You know, it's like when it, you don't yeah. have the viewership, it's like can slam DefCon one and just start fucking your brother or something. Where else do they go from here? I, I mean, honestly, they have to commit to the bit. Like, if they're building up their OnlyFans, bro, they gotta fully go all the way. Like, they have to, they have to, they have to become the incest boys. Dude, clout which, um, is one hell of a drug. <laughs> one hell of a it, drug. It, it, it like, dude, it's a that dopamine rush. So are drugs though too. From it, they yeah. uh, the his brother, I forget which one's which, but uh, the one, the green one, was on um uh, in a uh, TikTok live saying that his brother is always asking him for zannies all the time because he loves downers. So hopefully they're not actually on drugs. Um, seems like they may be, but I, I don't know what would give you that impression. Of them fucking each other. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, the, maybe a... the uh, maybe the uh, the interest. bro. These guys yes. have a lot of bad stuff about them. They've beaten girls, beaten yeah. girlfriends. Like there's so many negative stories in the Island Boys. Yeah, they're and they're pieces of shit. They've never been loved. Like I remember in the height of I'm an Island Boy, they went to <laughs> Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley too. All right. Yeah. And we're up in the VIP section. Muta, were you there? There was a bunch of people no, I there. Wasn't there for that. I think it was um, Donut Operator and Leon Lush and a bunch of people were there with us in our little section mm. that we had. And the Island Boys came into the arena. The entire arena erupted. They were throwing things at them. People were jumping over people that punched them. Like it, it was crazy. They were hated and there was no controversy. It's not like they just got done. Uh, being exposed for beating up their girlfriend or anything. It was just, the, it was the Island Boys and everyone wanted to hit them. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Scentbird. Ladies and gentlemen, for just $17 a month, you too can try a series of subscription boxes with no surprises, pick exactly what you want, and eventually try some new scents. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Scentbird is uh, telling us that this is summer, and summer is all about having fun, at least in my opinion. For $17, you can get one cent every month, and you can upgrade your subscription to get more. Ladies and gentlemen, they've got the same brands like Prada, Gucci, so on and so forth. And of course, they've got a whole bunch of amazing niche scents that you can try and find. So again, if you want to smell different every day, that's your prerogative. And Scentbird helps you get right there. And of course, you can pop them open too, just like so. Ooh, look at that. I've got heretic pistol whip, ladies and gentlemen. That's pistol as P-I-S-T-I-L. It's got a made in USA. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, if I spray it onto me again, pretty healthy amount. It smells smooth, sexy, and very sweet. And of course, this is just one of many scents that they have. And I highly urge you go check them out. I also like the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Pour Home. It's a pretty good scent. And make sure you use our code ordinary podcast. That's ordinary podcast, one word. And again, it's just a little over seven dollars in your first month when you calculate that amazing discount. And it's available in the USA and Canada. That said, let's get back to the podcast. I mean, what do you expect from like good. TikTok planted rappers? Yeah, right. Good. Like, yeah, they, they were. Uh, it's it's a it's a weird weird. And like every time I look at them nowadays, it's like every time I'm looking at the X threads, it's like. I hate the fact that they changed the name to X, uh, but uh, they're they're like they're they're compare they're like saying that apparently he was with like Epstein or some shit or like they, they yeah, were groomed by this. him or something. That's yeah. so. Fucking... I don't know if that's true, but there is a picture of like Jeffrey Epstein and two little boys that look like they could have been the Island Boys when they were younger. But I don't know if it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the dates match up. I don't know if that's a meme. I you know yeah. Who knows what yeah. that is? It would be really uh, funny if that was if that was the case. It wouldn't be funny, but it would be a uh, you know funny coincidence, right? Well, just think about it. If they're on Epstein Island, I'm an island boy. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're going to fucking hell, dude. What is it, Saint Little Saint James Island or whatever? 
Yeah, that St. James Island. Island. Speaking yeah, of, that's the Epstein Island. Speaking about um, people that like, you know, became very, very famous and then relevant. Um, today, I got shocking news that little Tay has passed away. Did you guys see that? I saw that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Is that confirmed? Um, mainstream I media. Really start, hope not. We, I think we were the first ones to to break it, right? But yeah. our source is literally her account. Her account is putting out a statement saying that her and her brother have passed away, and you know it's still being investigated on what happened. Some are speculating that it was a drug overdose. Others are spe speculating that it was murder, what, whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The, the thing that really worries me right now is the brother would always do clickbait type of shit on that account. Yeah. And he and mm -hmm. the brother had control of a little taste all all her social medias. So I'm I'm really worried that this is some fucking sick prank. Um but I mean, I guess a prank would be way better than them actually dying. Um, but, right. Yeah, obviously. Exactly. But um, but I mean, it, it's not something you come back from. And I'm, I'm pretty sure in certain areas, it's that that's like faking your death. That's pretty illegal, isn't it? Right. Like, yeah. By um, the time this comes out, you know, the audience probably will know, know exactly what's going on. But, you know, yeah. right now, it just this story just happened. So that's yeah, just yeah. wild. My uh, my initial instinct was uh, like, you know, obviously you take it at face value. It's it's terrible. And then on scrolling on Twitter, just the way that the algorithms work, the next tweet for you below that was a uh, little Tay token that had said it was launching today, which I'm not saying that that is in, in any way related. I think it's just like a side. I, I don't think that they're that, related that at all. That actually hurts me to hear. Cause I don't I, I, think it's, I don't think that's what yeah. it is. I hope to God not, but there was a, a like a, an ironically placed little Tay token that I saw on as soon as, you, as, you, as soon as you said that, Muta lit right the. Fuck it's, up. I don't. I'm not saying I, that's what dude, happened. I, I that's like, like true. But I didn't even see did the tweet, see but I can visualize it in my head. I know oh, exactly what I, it looks and like. And I was like, oh no, please don't. Look. I mean, like, hopefully, you know, I just want to know what ha what ha like sort of what happened. But yeah, I like the fact that it's posted on Instagram. Girl. It makes me kind of question it because I really hope that it's not the case and yeah in, in a way i hope that this is like a clickbait attempt because it is like that girl is really really young obviously and like so for anybody that doesn't know little tay i believe she was the daughter of a realtor and like she did this like fake flexing shit it was like that you know or like kind of douche tuber thing but she was a little girl it was whatever everyone kind of laughed at it played along whatever um and like i didn't hear about her for a long time until literally like an hour before we filmed this or started filming this where she like, it was like she passed away on her Instagram. And I'm just hoping that it's like some clickbait attempt because that's still as as it is a lot better than the alternative of somebody, you know, that young. And I believe it was also her brother that died too in that situation. Yeah. Uh, in this current situation, yeah. I hope they're not dead. Like this is, well, this is it's wild. terrible. I can tell you how it possibly could have happened right off the bat. Fentanyl, that shit is crazy. You know, a couple people are at a house and they're all, oh, let's take a pill or let's do this or let's do that. Has a little bit of fentanyl in it. Everyone's dead. Like that shit is crazy. I don't think that gets. I mean, I, they, they mix it with weed all the time nowadays too. And it's like I've had my uh, cousin. Uh, well, I call them my aunt's kids because they're far significantly younger. And he was telling me in his high school, like this one girl, like she smoked a doobie, and like apparently they had to call the ambulance because that weed was laced with fentanyl and. For those of you who don't know what fentanyl like is, it's a synthetic um, opioid, opioid, which is really fucking potent. Like it's more potent than any other opioid. Just a tiny like fuck up on the dosage can land you at death's door. That's how that's how potent fentanyl is. Yeah, and uh, it comes in by the boatload. And a lot of like a lot of drugs that you can buy on the street, and I don't recommend you do it again for YouTube. Don't buy drugs illegally. Those drugs contain traces of fentanyl. You don't. You only need this much, like a very tiny infinitesimal amount, to go fucking at death's door. And, and, so. and to back that up, they they I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it it went something like this. There was a bust of fentanyl in California, and it was like in a van or something. It was enough fentanyl to kill like seventy million people. <laughs> oh no doubt, no seventy doubt on that million. One. Like yeah. what the. F that's insane. Because again, you only need like a really, really tiny amount to do it, and like, and and I don't know if Little Tay was like, was she like a, was she like a drug user? Was that like a thing that people thought? I don't know. No, I don't think there's any evidence of that. Yeah. No, exactly. If there, she was like, like fourteen. Um, 
No, but the reason, yeah. the reason why I say that is because that's the age where, oh, I'm going to pop a pill. I'm going to smoke some weed. I'm going to, you know what I mean? That's the age where kids start doing shit like that. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could, listen, it could be very, it could be a possibility. I really hope to God that it's not, but you know. Yeah, I don't well, know. Well, obviously, I think today we'll probably find out all the information we really need on this situation. Um, yeah. I'm I'm really hoping that it's just a clickbait or something. I'm really hoping that it's all just clickbait shit and she comes out alive from this because so far it's only one Instagram post and there hasn't been like, I don't think there's, has there been like actual like police like checking up on the house and like, you know. No, it's just, no? just reportedly one Instagram. That's all, all yeah. it is. My team, my okay. team is on it. They're, they're looking at everyone else's yeah. reports and they're trying to figure it out. But I was listening to this yeah. podcast just to talk more about fentanyl and how crazy it is. Now the, um, the people that the firemen that EMPs or whatever EMTs, I think is the correct term, the people mm-hmm. that work in the ambulances, whatnot. Now they have to have all different types of like gloves, like full body gloves, whatever, because when there's an overdose, like if a cop just touches the skin of somebody that's having an overdose and they have fentanyl, then the cop will go down and start having an overdose. So that's how potent this stuff yeah. is. I mean, it, it like uh, you're talking about the stuff that like is fluid and it gets through your skin and it'll like, you know, it'll start fucking immediately reacting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a like it's a it's a fucked up it's a fucked up drug and it's a, it's a fucked up world we kind of live in where it's like it's not like it was back in I would say the early 2000s when I was like back in, the in black, high school black tar heroin days. Yeah, like okay, listen. Back in the day, like I'm pretty sure weed was just still weed. It wasn't weed laced with some of the most insanely synthetic shit that was coming out of like China or something. So <laughs> times are a lot different. If you're a kid nowadays, you got to be extra fucking careful. Okay, they got to have apps for this kind of shit. He said black tar, tar heroin, and you go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back back listen. in 20, 2005, dude. Black tar heroin, dude. I heard about that shit back in like oh for dude it was like that that was old school stuff back in the day yeah but um ray charles was on that shit <laughs> was he actually yeah. damn yeah. What the fuck? that was when it was like kind of like normal like it wasn't as crazy so keen what do you uh what have you been thinking about this uh i've been wanting to bring up fousey since like literally a couple days ago when i saw this airport video so yeah Caleb, explain it to me i don't fousey? i don't i know who fousey is okay uh, but i don't know any of the stuff that's been going on so i know from what i've seen and from what i've understood the last 35 days he's been doing like a, a subathon on twitch right which for those of you who don't know what a subathon is you stream every day non-stop it's how it is so he does this IRL streaming shit now, which, by the way, we all know that 99.9% of IRL streaming situations end up in f***ing disasters. That's not me saying it. That's just math. So he was at an airport. I think it might have been in Toronto or something. Uh, he was at the airport. And, by the way, IRL streaming at an airport, smart f***ing decision, by the way. You know, it's not like anybody's been swatted there before. So there's this one drunk girl, right? Visibly drunk, okay? You know somebody's drunk. They're sitting in an airport bar. He goes up, rizzes this chick up, gives her like $300, shares the cash app. So she makes like decent money. I guess the community donates over there. And then allegedly he goes to the bathroom with this drunk person and allegedly has sex with them. Now he claims he doesn't, but just shortly after, you know, meeting this girl, he's telling people that he went to the Mile High Club which is a suit, which is, you know, I'm aware uh, a phrase for sex for those people who aren't listening. I didn't know that. I thought it was about getting high. So I thought maybe he took it, allegedly took advantage of this person. Isn't and uh, drugs into a federal the mile high club is when you, when you have sex on a plane, right? When you're above. Yeah. The, so yeah, this yeah. was, this was allegedly in like an airport bathroom. Okay. And for a while he was like, yeah, yeah, I was in the mile high club community gave him a little bit of backlash right there. And he immediately started rolling it back. The VOD started getting deleted. You can't delete something that's on the internet. People are going to fucking download it. And yeah. he's like, the, the thing, like, now I guess he'll deny this now. But for me, I like I saw that behavior and I was like, man, I was really kind of rooting for maybe a little bit of FouseyTube. Like, I, I was never one to be a fan of FouseyTube. I always thought he was a fucking, I always got bad vibes from him. But I'm like, hey, anybody that's having a comeback moment, I'm down to look at that shit. Mm-hmm. When I saw that, I'm like, unanimously as a community... How the fuck are we not against this at the same tier as like EDP 445, like well, taking advantage of a you, drunk person? You left out a, a couple parts that changed the story quite a bit. Um, okay. So 
basically he goes to the the bar in in the airport and the girl's obviously been drinking she's buzzed right and then yeah. he immediately starts hitting on her and all this other stuff when he knows that she's been drinking right um he's sober as hell and then she starts pouring her life out that she was sold into trafficking and was forced to sleep with uh, truck drivers and all this other stuff. So then he makes a big deal to his stream. I'm against that. We need to raise money for her. You know, um, you know, he's trying to make himself look like a good guy to help this girl out after she, you know, said all this. Um, and then he goes, I'm going to go get her some food from the, from the snack bar or whatever turns the camera around so you can't see where he's actually going, then comes back and says, I just joined the model Kai club. I swear to God, I swear to God, I swear to God. So let me get this straight. This girl's drinking. She's a victim of trafficking. You've raised money, gave it to her, and then you took her to the bathroom to f her, get a job, whatever, and then you came back and bragged about it after you tried to sell, tell everyone that you were helping this girl out and you're doing a good thing. So he exposes yeah. himself for being a manipulative piece of shit. He exposes himself for not actually wanting to help her. He wanted a job. He wanted to fuck her. That's what he wanted, right? In exchange for money, donations, whatever, right? So it wasn't about helping mm -hmm. her. It was about helping himself. Um, and then when he gets canceled, he me immediately goes into, oh, it was a joke, guys. Okay, wait, so you're making a joke about taking a girl to the bathroom and getting a job who's been a victim of trafficking? That's the joke. So that didn't work either. So then he then defaults into crying, say, admitting that he pretends to be a good person, but he's actually a bad person. And then has this omission of being involved in fucking in the past where he would be a client to some of these women that were in, in the human trafficking. He would be at massage parlors, and as we all know, a lot of those people working at the shady massage parlors are victims of being trafficked. I think that's where the implication is. So, They're like prostitutes. Then after all that happens, then he's trying to spin it. He uploads an apology video, and he's again trying to spin it. And then, um, you know, there's a tweet where, G7, let's go. And it's just like, this is all just lies and manipulation and and self-centered fucking shitty crappy fucking behavior to someone who's been my friend for years e ever since i did those um the the fuzzy tube documentary on july 15th you know i felt bad for him I, I i wanted to help him out i gave him a job opportunity to work on the tiktokers versus youtuber uh boxing event which was my gig i i included him in that we then launched mm -hmm. happy punch together um and He's had all these issues ever since the beginning. I've been doing everything for the company to the point where, um, you know, he sold me like most of his shares, which I gave him a stupid amount of money for. Um, but he still owns some shares in my company. And for, for, for months and months and months, I've been calling this dude like every day, like, come on, you got to get back. You know, he, he was alone. He had nobody. I'm calling him every single day. Like, it doesn't matter if you're broke. It doesn't matter if you have nothing. You're still foozy tube. You can entertain. I finally get him. Uh, you know, out of his shell to the point where he's doing this and he starts uploading these fucking TikTok videos. And he's like, when I was down, guys, when I was down in LA, no one was there for me. I was sending out messages and no one responded to me. I was all alone. And now that I'm up on top, people want to F with me. That's a lie. I was calling him every day. Dean, the great uh, fellow boxer and friend of Fousey was checking in on him. Anthony Taylor was checking him. Like, these are just lies and manipulations, and I can't fucking deal with it. When I seen that shit with that girl and how he treated that girl, I don't want to be friends with someone like that. So it's like someone said, oh, you're backstabbing your friend. You're trying to cancel him. I'm not trying to fucking cancel him. He can go have a career. Um, I'm trying to cancel a fucking friendship. I am done, bro. Like... That yeah, guy. that's uh, the way that he the way that he acted around that girl, and the reason why like it really f***ed me is like as a community, like I've seen f***ed up shit all the time, right? Like, okay, I'm sorry to rephrase that. Back in the day, we used to f***ing we we like if we're talking about canceling back in the day, getting canceling over stupid shit was like really common. Okay, back in the day, okay, lying about you know a fucking video game achievement was enough to have your career ruined. Which now that I compare it to what we see nowadays with like shit like this, 
this is like a really, really predatory, evil person to me. This is not like one of the things that I always hate are like the people that are fake positivity. So, or like the overly positive individuals. Cause you know, damn well that that's all right. Like, um, this is the kind of guy where it's like the way that he's acted around that girl. It's like, dude, I, 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 I'm surprised that kick is willing to give him a career. I'm surprised that, you know, this guy is still has fans after the kind of shit. Oh yeah. This happened on Twitch. Then he got banned from Twitch. So then kick came in and gave him a multi-million dollar deal. So now he's on kick. Dude, I don't even know where the, they. I mean, I know where they get this money, but Holy shit. They apparently gave him like, Allegedly, fifteen million. Just, just to put this in perspective, he does the deed uh, this day, gets canceled this day and the next day, and then the third day gets the kick deal. So that's how close these scenarios are are, are to each other. Yeah. So like G seven, he's fucking got some fifteen million dollar deal, and that's pretty much where we're sitting at. And uh, again, I don't know. I don't know what it's the not fifteen mil. It, it is a multi million dollar deal, but it's not fifteen mil. Uh, but that that's just fake numbers that someone tweeted out. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect him to give Fuzzy Tube like fifteen million dollars. I don't like Fuzzy Tube has had a bit of a comeback, but I don't think he's fifteen million dollars worth of a comeback. But yeah, Caleb, that was uh, that was pretty much the rough idea of this guy. Okay, um, yeah, I'm not a huge Fousey fan. He's always seemed just insane to me. I don't know if there's like he has like problems uh, or. Oh, I think he has mental issues. He has like yeah. manic depressive disorder or something. Yeah, he's always seemed like very delusional. He he um, he's he's got issues, but I just want to say like he's just not a good friend. He is actually not a good friend. It's all about him. It's always like it's a one way street with Fousey. It's help Fousey. Fuzzy needs this. Fuzzy needs that. Fuzzy, like, if you're down and out, Fuzzy ain't going to come and try to help you out. And when Fuzzy does help out people, you know what else is there when Fuzzy does that? A camera. A camera. <laughs> a camera. Yeah. When Fuzzy helps out anyone, there is a camera there to say, hey, look, I'm a good guy. Hey, look, I'm a good guy. Yeah, that anybody that like and and again, this is I feel like in some cases you're way too trusting of random people because like I've seen this guy since the fucking his first days of content when my family introduced him. Then I saw him during like the uh, the the fucking social experiment era, and I'm like, dude, this guy is like a fucking actual like clout goblin, like a nut job, you know? Like it's it it is what it is with this character and i think the 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 drama alert interview you brought on with him and vitali that little fucking argument yeah. was like enough for me to like get the the gist of it but i think it's a bit shameful like after all of the uh, after all the time you guys have put in together that it's like it really hasn't amounted to anything and like you're what, all uh, you doing with its scheme so, what is that what you sucking on that back here um this is uh oxygen oh it's an oxygen boost so like You'll notice, like, if you get one of these things, you can buy them at, like, the drugstore. They're everywhere, right? Um, it's got, like, 90% pure oxygen. You'll just notice it. Like, you're just, like, every once in a while, you know what I mean? Okay. I- I'm sitting oh. here vaping, right? So you combine the two, and I'm pretty much normal right now. Wait, you're like, you're, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second, wait a minute, I need to, I need to know you're, the math on this one. You're balanced. He's, he's killing his lungs in one shot, and then he's zeroing it out in the, what the f***? Yes, sir. <laughs> you get the, oh, I, I think got there's that balance. like, I think in the air, I don't remember, is it like 30% oxygen? Like how much, what is the percentage of oxygen? I think it's less, I think it's like four or something like that, it's not very much. Is it really four? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Oh, the atmosphere, dude, listen, the environment's all f***ed up, okay? It's mostly like, nitrogen. Uh, I mean, it get, is, get, oh, 21% oxygen. So 21%, right? So you smoke mm-hmm. this. I mean, you're barely getting any oxygen whatsoever. And then you hit it with this, and like it even it's, it evens out. <laughs> you get like four <laughs> times the oxygen you get in a regular f***ing <laughs> breath. That's <laughs> insane. Yeah. I, That's a... It, I, it's fun. You should, get, you should get one. You should try it. I absolutely I might, will. I might. Like right before... You know how you like drink a coffee or whatever before you make a video or whatever? Like it's kind of like the same thing. Just a little boost, yeah. you know, some alpha brain. I, I slam a shot of whiskey before a fucking video. I don't know about coffee, dude. I fucking, I really? got a bong. I, yeah, I just sh- hit a shot of whiskey or fucking hit a fucking hit from the bong and go at it. I can't do, I can't do, <laughs> depends on the video. Like if it's an alien video, like, okay, Kim, have you heard about the Peruvian <laughs> alien? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Is this the, the brown ones? <laughs> No, no, what? no! Look at Peru alien attack. Just look at. I want to see his reaction to it. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like, 
the Which is you mean the brown one? So like, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Well, down in Peru, there were these little brown aliens. There's a whole documentary on it that were uh, that that it's it's like 1998 or 1988 or something hmm. like that. Is that where you're brown, referring to? Okay. No, no, there's no, a new there's, attack. Okay. There's, there's an, an invasion going on in a right Peruvian now, village. There's an actual legit alien invasion allegedly going on in July since July 11th. They have the fucking Peruvian military fighting off fucking predators. What? They've described so yes, they've described the alien. The village chief described this alien as either the predator or actually in one of the news articles, the green goblin. How do I not know about this? Bro, I literally, okay, so last night I was streaming somebody in chat, like, it just flew right by, they're like, Peru alien attack, and my autistic mind was like, wait a minute, alien attack? Hold on, let's Google that shit out. Dude, it, they got video, it's really shittily the recorded video. video. And indecipherable, all right? <laughs> it is an ancient, indecipherable parable, it makes no sense. <laughs> I, I love the fact that there's people who are like zooming into the pixels and trying to find the tiny. Yeah, let me like, zoom what? into the compression artifacts yeah. and see if I can see an alien. Like yeah, that, that's actually like that alien that landed in I think it was Michigan or where was it Michigan where they were like ten feet tall or something and hiding behind the backhoes and shit and skidsters. That was Las no, no, Vegas. No, that was I think. Vegas. That was oh, Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was wild. That was uh, Vegas, and the cops also were like, hey, if you ever see an alien, just can feel free to shoot it. So <laughs> even the cops kind of gave them full clearance to blow aliens out. But yeah, that's, uh, that, that's uh, again, going back to like the drug use, it's the only time I would ever consider, like again, I have to be high before I cover anything alien-related. can never be sober. Dude, the but government's yeah, got to like start telling us which are the good aliens and which are the bad ones. Which how ones do, you do we shoot? That? Yeah, like which ones are are we supposed to shoe? Like, the, can there be a good alien? I don't think they're ever going to be a good alien. They're all fucked up, dude. No, no, there's good ones. There's good ones and there's bad Definitely. ones for sure. Yeah. Oh, that, that you got you guys are easy. Way too hopeful, dude. I, I would never trust any one of these things. Scary as shit, dude. According to Doctor Stephen Greer, there's like sixty nine different uh, species of aliens that we're aware of. Dude, that's, that's the lot. guy that remote views. I swear, I don't even. I, what is it about him that you believe? I have to. I have to push you back. That guy's on this. the guy that's pulling that all guy? the strings. All these people that are sitting there and they're going to Congress and they're testifying under oath. Stephen Greer's behind all of it. He is the he's the mastermind. The mastermind. But what like, makes him know? A, yeah, what makes him know exactly? Why, why so are you special? Like, uh, what? Uh, I don't know. He's the one that's bringing all these people forward. He's got the connections mm. in the government and friends and allies. And he's got, Weird. you know, he's got so many cases documented. And I mean, he's been doing this for like 30 years. Yeah, that I, I remember seeing him on Joe Rogan's podcast, like in 2012 or some shit like that, or 13. And, and you know what Joe said uh, years later? He said, yeah, people in the UFO community don't like him. And don't trust him. Um, hmm. So, you know how there's like competitors everywhere, right? Well, there's competitors yeah, yeah. with who's going to be the UFO guy, right? And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these UFO guys hate Stephen Greer for some reason. But based on all my research, and I'm heavily into the subject, Stephen Greer, Greer seems to be the main guy. That's the guy that's making all the shit happen. Hmm. And I mean, he doesn't I've... change his story and he just keeps on. Yep. And, Interesting. And. His main thing is, is that the government is going to try to convince the people that the aliens are hostile, that it's a threat, right? That there's all these mm -hmm. bad guys in the disclosure pro uh, movement that are going to try to convince the public aliens bad. We need to kill them. We need to shoot them. Right. Type of thing. Right. Stephen Greer is like, no, they, they don't. They're not hostile. That's not what's going on. So that's his hey. whole whole uh, thing. Looks like you've been manipulated by the mainstream media yet again, Mudahar. Dude, I listen, man. I, I'm I'm just a skeptic, dude. I told you, I told this so many times. I will believe this the moment I see some actual concrete shit. Until then, I'm go to Peru. I, I don't know. Let's go dude, to Peru that, right now. You want to go to Peru? You want to book a flight there? Can you want to join in? You want to see if this alien shit is real? Oh, Let's I'm go down. See this Green Goblin. I'm down. Dude, I'm, go see this. Green Goblin. I okay. Listen, the village chief straight up said it was the Green Goblin. So it's like that's what he compared it to. So and the, and from the he's video a huge fan I've of seen, Sam Raimi. Okay, yes, but like I okay. So the footage that they showed, I won't lie. I saw the Green Goblin a little bit too. Okay, like maybe it's like me combining like the 
an article that I read and the video I watched me, my brain is firing off synapses. It was a green fucking alien. Okay. That's all that it was. And the people, listen, the people were screaming like hyenas. So clearly they were getting attacked or something. There was literally a girl that had her fucking neck slashed. Like she survived, but she got like actual injuries from whatever alien attack this is. Now, I know the skeptics will say it's probably some cartel related shit. And you're probably right. Like I'm not denying anybody, you know, but like I, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get to the I bottom need to of see this the stuff. Fucking, Damn, this dude, is dude, exciting. They sent, the Peru, they sent the Peruvian military. Now, obviously, they're gonna send the military, and it's like a by the way, this is a 10 hour river ride from like any like like capital to like their location. Wow. And uh they sent the army there. I guess the army's trying to make sure these people, like, if they're claiming that they're getting attacked on it, like, they're doing night patrols now, dude. So I think that whatever whatever is happening is real. I don't want to sit there and say these people are faking it, especially if everyone in the village is getting together, fighting off whatever it is. Is it an alien? Who f***ing knows? Is it probably some human shit? Most likely. But I just want to get to the bottom of it. When the village chief is saying that the perpetrators are 10 feet tall armored like predator or the green goblin that shit like ra- you know raises the tension could you ima- makes you wonder right could you imagine we go there right <laughs> welcome to this episode of some ordinary gamer podcast we're here with the green goblin why are you attacking these villagers <laughs> I, dude i would kill to see i listen i i feel i feel like i want to go there maybe we might find something maybe we won't i just want to see it dude i i would be down for it if I can't bring a firearm, I feel like I wouldn't feel safe. I wouldn't go. It's Peru. You can bring any gun you want. Nobody's gonna fucking no. question you. You're fine. No, but it's it's been it's been insane looking at like what's been going on on that side of the world. And again, it's like something that like barely kicks up. Like this is what I hate about like the internet. All the cool shit just gets like kind of weighted into nothing, and it's just a depressing information that gets flooded yeah. all the way to the top. You know, it's like I kind of wish my Fox CNN was always like. Alien attack in Peru. Like, you know, something that you would see. Like, this is the kind of shit that you would see in the movies, right? Like, it's a movie, like, newsreel. We don't get that shit in reality. So, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's a wild thing. You should but, you uh, should do a deep dive in some of these guys' stories that are testifying to Congress right now. Because it's it's wild. And I don't think nobody's covering I don't see it anywhere. It's, 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 uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. Like, this one guy, he's in the military. He gets sent down to Indonesia for there. There was just an earthquake there. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And so him and uh, six other guys, their job is to to hold cover why the planes come in and drop off medical supplies and food and whatever. So they're just doing the rounds. They're dropping them off and they're up on this hill. Right. And the reason why they climbed the top of the hill is because they'd have a better vantage point of where the packages are being dropped off behind them they notice that there is like a giant UFO. Like it just, it's just sitting on the ground and it's spinning slowly. And they're like, what the hell? Like this is off in the distance pretty far. So they go down to see, you know, investigate or whatever. And as they're going down the six of them like this, they get crisscrossed, right? Four guys here, four guys here and all black. Right. Um, and there's nothing they can do. Right. They, they, they hear the mm-hmm. safeties go off. Um, there's nothing they can do because they got guys on each side. So they give up their weapons or whatever. And uh, these guys dressed in all black were just American accent professionals. Way, way better at this fucking, um, army stuff than they are. Right. Uh, very smooth with how they operate, saying we're going to smoke you. We're going to smoke you. And, mm-hmm. you know, he goes down to tie his shoes or whatever. And, and he's trying to get like, look at this thing. Because there is a UFO off the ground, and then there's a platform that's also off the ground for a little bit, and they got trucks coming in, and they're dropping off these big crates, and it's being loaded into the UFO. So UFO is floating. The fucking the platform at the bottom is basically floating. All right, and then it's going up, and then bringing these like supplies to it. Long story short, they end up letting these guys go. And tell him you say anything, we're going to kill you type of shit. No, nobody says anything for years and years and years until this guy testifies to Congress just recently. And uh, later, uh, he finds out from another person that's um, disclosing the story and part of the disclosure movement that there are most likely people in those crates. So 
like a human trafficking involving UFO type of situation. And the reason why they would do it there is because an earthquake just happened. And so a lot of people are going to obviously come up missing. So, okay. yeah, that that's the whole experience. <laughs> you hear that and it's like, what the f*** is happening? bro yeah there's a lot of shit man like the fucking anytime you go to these like uh anytime you go to these like panels where like i i think one of the things that f***s with me is like a lot of the stuff is usually they they, they don't tell you the juicy stuff because that's always reserved for like you know a private hearing or something yeah. like that too and the way that you described it, it's like this obvious like weird scenario right like when we're talking about ufos it's like then it gets grounded by a human element like human trafficking like something that's more something that's more realistic right and to like you know there's evil organizations that take advantage of you know people and sometimes it's like their criminal element is the most likely culprit you know and, and the same could be applicable to this like peruvian alien attack too right like but if, a week down the road we might find out Mira, i feel like in this day and age if someone's gonna have a wild story like that reddit or the internet is gonna be like oh no they're lying yeah. because of this and like that's not happening and also i, mm. I can see some drunk in a bar telling that story i can't see that same individual making up a story and telling that story in front of congress under oath like that's just that's wild to me that someone would lie about that um it, what do you get out of it like what what's the point there's no movie deal there's no book deal like why i it's just i yeah i feel i feel like when i don't know i mean People like I, I never underestimate human stupidity is all I say, right? Like never underestimate like human beings will do some dumb shit from time to time. Um, but you're right. Like what what is the reason for it? I'm just for me, I like I, I this kind of stuff is mostly until I see it, I'll believe it because I can understand where a lot of like those Redditors that we just talked about come from mm -hmm. or like a lot of those people on Twitter come from. It's like unless you see something nowadays with your own eyes. You just can't believe it, even if, like, no matter how outlandish or real the story sounds, right? Like, I think we're in a pretty shitty time for any form of, like, you know, Bigfoot, alien kind of, like, you know, uh, evidence period. Because with all this AI shit and, like, every – the ability to, like, fabricate all this information and, I, like, spread misinformation. I hear you 100%, unless, yeah. but we got too many documented confirmed UFOs, you know, yeah, like, right. like from the Pentagon, like, yes, we don't know what this is type of shit. Like there's too much of that. There's too many government officials testifying to Congress right now. There's too many, mm -hmm. uh, um, military personnel coming out. Um, even back in 2001, like so many military personnel came out with their stories, um, in, in a major, um, disclosure effort. Um, th there's just too much. The, the, the evidence is actually racking up if you look into it. Hmm. Right. Well, you know, it's going to be one of those things where like, Hey, I think, I think we live in a time where maybe in the next couple of years, we might get what we want. Maybe we might get nothing, but we're getting closer to whatever truth is out there. You know, we're getting closer to something like that. I fully believe that our government is working with aliens. All right. And it's part of some type of, you know, Galactic Federation, something that I've talked about, I think, on the show before. Um, <laughs> and that there's bad aliens and we're part of the good aliens. Or we're at least I mean, on listen, one team. Yeah. Who knows who's good and who's bad? Yeah. I, see, that that's like, that's like, until, like, that's one of those things where, like, I want to believe it, but until I get some more, it's going to take <laughs> me, like, in 10 things to believe before I get to the Galactic UN of aliens. You know I mean? The Galactic <laughs> Federation hits oxygen. Yeah. That's, that's what I think is going on. I think we are yes, part sir. of the Galactic oh Federation. My God. You know? Um, have you guys, uh, speaking of uh, maybe maybe more realistic things, uh, have you heard of uh, about the second proxy war under our current Cold War number two? Wait, that's what? That's about to go down in Niger? No, I haven't heard about uh, what's there's going a, on. In... There's a coup in Niger, and uh, the Wagner group uh, of Yeveni Prigozhin is going to... Uh, they're going to like take advantage of that. It seems like, at least, they're, they're, they're interested in taking advantage of the destabilized nature of Niger, and they're going to... Um, uh, it's just a good. It's another opportunity to have a, another proxy war between the West and. Um, Isn't Niger where we get a f ton of our like resort, like where where a lot of uh, Europeans Africa get their in general. energy yeah, resources? I, I was from? just like going to say yeah. Africa in general. There is such a giant, giant battle for Africa right now. Yeah. China has went through and just taken over so much of Africa. Would yeah. Deal. When well, I the say Belt take, and Road Initiative, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't really like. Um, 
you know, conquer nations anymore and, you know, um, you know, claim that they're part of China now, but what they, they do business deals, they do yeah. multiple different deals and treaties and this and that, and that's how you take over a country in the well, modern China day. is one of those countries for those who don't know the belt and road initiative, China doesn't ever want money back. What they do is they come into your country, they build infrastructure and they say, pay us back in like an oil or something, some insane yep. uh, payment scheme that both sides know they can fulfill. So China effectively just gets to keep what Whatever they built and by extension capitalizes on new land um yep. yeah. it's their version of like conquesting without like sending boots on the ground and like you yeah. know putting guns in people's faces yeah we have uh we have a military base in djibouti um and also the importance of the suez canal the, the military base in djibouti though just down the road there uh china built a, a base a couple a couple years ago um super close to our only permanent military base in africa in djibouti to guard the Suez Canal, which is the most important canal basically in the entire world. So, what a Jesus name! Jesus Christ, Djibouti. <laughs> Djibouti dude. What a name! You just it's hard got, to spell. It starts with a D. You just got demonetized twice. Djibouti, brother. <laughs> but see that? Listen, man. At the end of the day, the world we live in. Like, I just, I just hope we make it to the next. That's all I do. We man. will. Like every day, I wake up. I'm like, I just hope we make it to the next day. Oh yeah. Uh, you know. It is what it is. And I know that all three of us here are doomsday preppers. I know that we all have like ammo, guns, yep. food, Wait, everything who is the ready most to go. Guns? I think it's D you probably. It's definitely not like, me because my that, okay. that that part of my uh, preparation is relatively low. I don't I don't I don't see the benefit of multiple, 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 multiple guns. I think, you know. I have a lot. <laughs> you need ammunition. Yeah, if, okay. Ammunition, very right. important. Multiple guns. Yeah, I have a lot eh. of ammunition. All right, now yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Why? Okay, if you, if you don't have multiple guns, okay, what is, okay, actually, this is a good idea. What is your plan for when shit hits the fan? What are you guys, what are all of us going to do when the fucking, like, world ends? Yeah, what are you going to do, Keem? Yeah. What's your, fucking, what's the first thing you do? Okay, like, okay, let me paint the scenario. News report just kicked in, okay? Mm -hmm. well, fucking nuclear Armageddon's about to happen, okay? Crazy virus hits. World, the U.S. has pretty much said, you're f***ed, okay? We're going into, like, continuity of government. It's all on you. What's your first step? Go into, go into Hyden for the first 45 uh, days. Multiple testing on, um, uh, wh what is it called? Radiation or whatever to make sure Radiation, the outside's clear. air, food, um, water. Then um, my horde is massive, right? So then I'd start doing massive trades, um, take over the trade market that exists um locally um <laughs> within like 45 days you think human beings are going to establish a fucking trade market oh yeah he said hide out for 45 at, at days this point, okay. people are going to be starving and whatnot you know there's right. going to be things that i need like hey look i'm going to give this to you for now but meet me here and like you know tomorrow same time i i'm looking for this try to pay it back mm -hmm. and i'll keep giving you stuff as long as you keep getting me stuff build those relationships build those friendships hey we're stronger together campaign with every single person you see get the remaining survivors to make you the mayor the leader in charge once you're the leader um you know take over some rebels take over some bad guys and then build whoever's remaining um into your uh, in, into your team and just build 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 and then just you know, tell everyone that you're the president of the United States and just, <laughs> bro, you are like so fucking trusting. Listen, right I'm now. the president. <laughs> so no, have, have a, all your supporters not refer to you as the mayor first as the mayor, but then the president like refer to right. you. So when you come into new people, Oh, this is the president. Right. And then just run the campaign of like, this is the president. This is our leader type of shit. Have everyone doing that to just build you up, build you up, build you up. Okay. But like, okay. So after 45 days, you would let people know that you had a large cache of resources because you're trading with them, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I would let them know that I have an army. But do you have the army or is it just you? <laughs> no, you build the army by telling people that you have the army. Right. And in convincing you need, them, you need the guns for it. You need the, what are you going to do? You're going to give him spears and shit. What, and what he's shots? saying, he, yeah. what, what he's saying, Muda is hearts and minds. He's going to capture the hearts yeah, yeah, and minds yeah, yeah. of the people, the, the wasteland. Yeah. He's okay, cause, cause he you got to fake my, my it till you is, make it right. So you convince yeah, people yeah. that you, you do have the army, you do have the backing. And as you're doing this, you're actually making new soldiers. All right. With all these right. alliances and whatnot. Okay. See, my, my mentality is different. I'm, I'm becoming a raider as soon as it happens. Like, I have a cache of food, water, guns, everything. After 45 days, I'm raiding. Like, I'm becoming a fucking bandit, you know? <laughs> like, full mask on. I'm fucking rushing to settlements. I'm going to take over, like, grab it 
and go. All right, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna. I have my car armor plated. I'm rushing in. I'm grabbing all the resources, rushing out. Like no, fu- I'm gonna have like a small merry band of bandits. Yes, who all like, and, I, and I'm gonna make sure I slap them around a fair too. Much. Like if somebody gets too intelligent, you know they're getting fed to the fucking crocodiles. Okay, like that's how I maintain my government. My small little like band of like <laughs> Moon <misfits. ain't, laughs> Moon ain't lasting a quarter in the wasteland. What the f- <laughs> what do you mean? You, Keem's out here telling people that he's going to give him, a, like, tell them that he has resources. He'll be yeah. the leader of the free world. I'm telling yeah, you, I, what's, a business deal, business deal, business deal, and then you build an army from that, right? All those connections. Yeah, but you're do, okay, okay, but you're doing, okay, fine, all right. This actually really depends on the on the state of the world after, too, right? Like, okay, let's say that a fucking zombie apocalypse so happens, funny. okay? <laughs> like, a zombie apocalypse fucking happens. How are you going to maintain, like, a government? Like, I can understand after a nuclear bomb okay like sure you know you spend some time underground you come back up you have an extra arm cool whatever you're a little radiated but you can start a government but zombie attack like a fucking mega virus running around you're still relegated underneath um but you can't start a government if people have like what are you gonna do so the zombie apocalypse is just bs it would never ever happen it would never happen right because do you know what's more dangerous than a zombie, a slow moving zombie that bites you? A bear, a wolf, and humans have already like, you know, taken care of them and eliminated them. And so it's like the idea that a zombie apocalypse would overthrow the world. No, we'd have that issue solved so fast. We'd kill them all. We'd delete them. We'd trap them. We'd bait them into killing themselves. We're too smart to get defeated by zombies. It would never fucking happen. I agree. All these zombie okay. shows are bullshit. Yeah, I think the only way that would be a thing is if it's more so along the lines of uh, like 28 Days Later and Last of Us to where like if you it, it's an infection, right? Or it's like a virus that you can get the same way Airborne. you would get any other virus. Yeah. So like if it, you don't even have to get touched by the zombies, that'd be really the only way that it would be. Severe. Yeah, like but a then, little tiny spore comes through right. your nose and you're. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. like fentanyl. So, like my 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 girlfriend was like uh you know a while ago during the walking down was like oh my god what would you do if that had happened and i was trying to tell her like we're just too smart we kill him like what would you do and like off the top of my head i'm thinking of this trap that trap like um uh, imagine just like capturing some bad guys right and dangle them mm-hmm. over a cliff the zombies would walk off a cliff just like how they yeah. would herd the buffaloes off cliff to kill them you know like it's just it's yeah. so easy to defeat zombies. There would have to be a massive, either a a massive suspension of disbelief to be able to have zombies be realistic, or b they would have to be like superhuman mutant type creatures. That would be the only way. They'd have where to it would run be scary. super fast, be able to yeah. ju- jump exactly. super high. Like they'd have yeah, to more strength, all that shit. Like uh, dying light, like the things at night. That would be really scary. Oh, yeah, like a really... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, something like that, sure. You know what would um, work, though? What if all the animals were zombies? That would suck. A bear zombie fucking rushing at you and killing you? Yeah, Wolf zombies? Just... Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. But you're not wrong. There are actual deer zombies. Didn't you know that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's fucking deer zombies. Uh... Yeah, it's like a wasting disease that they have, but yeah. they're legit CWD. like deer zombies. Yeah, yeah, they're weird. They die in water too. They 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 go to water. Like their instinct is to go to water when they die, so they infect the water hole, so into more deer. Because it's a yeah, little I heard, I heard when CWD happens, like in the government, like and locks off that area and like just goes to town killing these things. Oh yeah, yeah. There's they don't fuck uh, around with any of it. There's a lot. I'm from Virginia, and there's a ton mm-hmm. of. Uh, there was a quite a few cases in Northern Virginia where I used to live, uh, and you would always call the the um, you would call the local authorities. You just see like yeah. a deer with with mange, and it just had shit all over its ass, and it's just like standing in the middle of a field like a fucking puppet. Imagine, really cr- imagine weird. bird zombies. You go outside, do, do, do. they're coming like from above you. Like that would be fucking scary, man. The movie Crow, Crow. There's a movie called Crow where that happens. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's always in like zombie fiction. Like if you ever play games like Resident Evil, the biggest carrier of the disease is like the fucking birds, right? Like they eat the bodies, they spread it over. Um, and honestly, yeah, like birds rushing down on you to like you know craw- claw you to death or something. Yeah, that's that's a up way to yeah. die. You, you know, yeah. alien zombies. The the thing the the thing that would get everyone, absolutely everyone, almost everyone is insects imagine if in- insects carried the zombie disease bro that would be it'd be impossible to go outside 
Oh, yeah, and, and also if you think about it too, I'm not exactly sure because uh, because people still get rabies. There's like 400,000 people that die a year from rabies around the world, and rabies okay. is only transmitted through like you know dogs and and uh, like raccoons in America and like small. What is, what um, is the thing with rabies? You get bit once, and then you have like how long until you can get your shot? Like 24 hours, right? I think it's a week. I think there's like okay. a, it, it differs. There's a different. There's a there's a the, the incubation period is pretty is pretty broad, and there's a couple people couple people who have survived it without yeah. uh, like just like with just normal treatment. But it generally has like a less than um, like one percent rate of survival, which is ridiculous. Um, rabies is wild. I mean, when you, when you get rabies, the crazy. thought of water drives you yeah. nuts. Like you can't yeah, drink you. water. Yeah. It's it's yeah. Weird. Wait, so like, hold on. How do you die from again rabies again? Like, I'm I'm I I, I just like eat your I'm brain? hearing it. Or something. It cooks your brain, right? Something to do uh, with the nervous system. Yeah, you you die. You don't drink anymore. You can't swallow. Um, uh, and also not f- f- not four hundred thousand. Uh, there's like four hundred thousand cases total. I saw a video about the the a couple like a couple days ago or whatever. It's like it's like sixty k a year or something. And there's like that, no cure that. for it, right? Once it incubates, like there's no cure for that shit. Um, I, there's like a weird area of gray. They don't really know. Um. It almost but, sounds uh, like a zombie thing for like humans, right? Yeah. Like when you get bitten and then like yeah. the thought in your like the thought of water scares the shit out of you. Like I'm to much the point where you're like I, I'm much older than you guys, but like when I was a little kid, there was this movie called Old Yeller. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that movie. I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen uh, it. but the the dog, it's he's such a great family dog, and the kid loves him, and the dog gets rabies, and they have to put him down. Bro, yeah. that's a that's scared a the shit bummer, out of me. Bummer, bummer movie. Yeah, it's good the shit out of me. I, I mean, like kid. with the with with fucking just, it's such a, it's like there are like the thing with the zombie, and the reason why I believe like zombie stuff can be a possibility is like ever since I like really looked into how diseases jump from things to thing, it's not as easy, obviously, like it's not like that c w d that wasting disease will jump to human beings because obviously there's a lot of differences, but I'm always scared like when it comes to like even diseases like mad cow disease or whatever, right like that shit takes like how long to like truly generate, and once you get mad cow disease, it's like you're done like your brain is gone it's when i learned about mad cow disease i literally just did not eat beef for the longest time because i was like i was always scared that like the beef that i could eat contained it until i found out the government does a really good job making sure that the fucking prions of like a lot of these animals aren't going to come through but there's a lot of those diseases man where like the symptoms are so zombie like Mm -hmm. sometimes you kind of think what if they evolved a little bit right like in last of us doesn't even doesn't these diseases feel like a dlc a dlc to what how they keep changing to to life right it's like they unload the the fucking covid pack right on the world (laughs) like it just feels like a tia a downloadable content yeah disease disease x oh my god yeah uh, did you see that the new one disease x well, uh, apparently they're just, it's not a new disease. They're actually focusing on like just worrying about the next pandemic and like already like uh, figuring I just, it out by now. I didn't I, even I, that's I what just, I heard. I saw it and I was just like, <sighs> I was, dude, I, I'll be real. Like, if I, if we ever have to go through a lockdown period again, like where we're stuck in our houses for a year, I don't think I can fucking mentally take that anymore. I'm just not going to do it. If what if they fumbled fun. COVID so bad, right? They purposely put out a vaccine that they knew would not help people. By the way, do, do people know that the vaccine that they applied for the patent like a decade ago or two decades ago or something? <laughs> Isn't that fucking weird? For mRNA vaccines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the- I think it's just the, I think it's what they applied it for was the- Oh, okay. Was the, that makes sense. Was the, the was style. The, was the vaccine what, what style. If, what if they fumbled this so bad to make people not trust the cure so they can unleash something where, again, they present a cure, but most people, Dad, I ain't taking that shit, and that kills all them. So now they have all the compliant people living. I mean, Genius. listen, I, 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 when it comes to when it comes to med- we, but we, we believe whatever the what the fuck is the WHO thing? We CDC. Believe, um, <laughs> yeah, we, jab me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> listen, uh, the CDC, the WHO, uh, China Medical Authority. We all believe the, the uh, big guys. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, um, I'm extremely but- vaccinated. I'm full of. 
some antibodies. Bro, bro, I have like 15. I take all the jabs. I was like, I got Moderna. I, I went back in. I was like, give me the Pfizer. <laughs> give me all of them. I still I'm get them cool. just for, for fun. <laughs> I actually just to support am, my country. I actually am vaccinated and I hate it. I wish I didn't do it. I'm so mad at myself. My manager Why? comes to me and he goes, you're not going to be able to fly. You're not going to be able to go anywhere. You have to get this done. You have to. I'm like, Fuck. And then I got it. I was like one of the first people to get it. Right. And then by the time boosters came like that, like never again. No, like I, I don't know if you do get boosters anymore. Do you, is that like a, are they updating the vaccine or are we getting updates to the more DLC or something? Yeah. Are we getting more? Uh, I don't know. Like I, I haven't gotten it since the third shot after that. I was like, Oh, you did get it. You got three. Well, yeah, I got the I got the one that like because you needed it to fill the vaccine passport thing so you could fly. Ah, after right, that. you're Canadian. If, True. If anything else came out, I was like, "Fuck you! That's your country that required me to do it." <laughs> I was like, no, dude. I was flying, dude. I was flying into in Texas, and like the federal government was like, "You got to have like a fully done." They don't ask it for it anymore. I think like I don't they they don't give a shit about it. But like during that period of like COVID lockdowns, it was you needed the you needed the uh, fucking paperwork to get through. And I'm sure there were some people that faked the fuck out of it, but I wasn't yeah, willing to take did. that chance. My yeah, buddy, see, I was not willing. My to buddy's from chances. Toronto and he literally had everything faked like right out the gate, like early, early. They just released it and he had a fake card and everything. Drop his name. Chris. <laughs> fat, I call him Fat Chris oh, from shit. Toronto. Oh, shit. Fat Chris from Toronto. <laughs> Yeah. See, I, see, like that's the thing. Like, I, I, I would, I would be down to do it, but like, man, that is that has taken some mega risks, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I live in Texas. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. I mean, when I, so, dude, dude, you know what's so wild during lockdown when I was in Texas uh, with with Jen, the funniest thing in the world, dude. So you needed like in those PCR tests to fly on the planes. The only fucking state in the country that did not have PCR tests available by any was like Texas. You know where I could get a PCR test? The last two options I had: this fucking shitty parking lot, like tent, yes, sir. where like you knew you were gonna get shot up. Or I'm not fucking with you. In front of a Seven Eleven, there was like a homeless mm-hmm. tent, free 100%. PCR tests. Oh yeah, dude. And guess what? When you get them, they're all positive because they're infected with COVID. Dude, yeah. Do you guys know about the the couple places like um, that are landlocked by Canada? Mm-hmm. What so do you, what do so you mean, on ones? the border of the United States and Canada, right? There's a couple mm-hmm. places where like there's like a little island of America, right? And there's no way to get to mainland America without going through Canada. And it's just a weird right. way how they drew the fucking line across, right? Because everyone thinks that when you look at a map, it's straight. It's not straight at all. It's it goes like this right yeah and so these people during lockdown they couldn't go into canada and they couldn't get into mainland america so they're just stuck there like starving and dying basically (laughs) yeah it's wild there's there's documentaries on it i wish i could think of the name of the place but there's a couple uh, different places that got landlocked like that uh i remember seeing that i think i saw that about uh point roberts yeah that's one of them there's a couple of them yeah yeah, I remember I, seeing dude, those. I'm, I'm like, I'm hoping that it doesn't get to this point again. I'm really, I'm really fucking hoping that. I don't like, think it will. Don't. And uh, I think in Texas, especially, like, I mean, where I live, no one really did it. There was, I moved here in 2021, and uh, I got COVID the week I moved to Texas. I got uh-huh. it in Tennessee, in Jackson, Tennessee, on my way down to Texas. Right. And um, like when I was moving, so I had covid while i was moving my entire life and it wasn't bad at all by the way i wasn't even like sick really for me um i lost my sense of taste which was strange uh but other than that i didn't even notice that i had covid do you still have it lost or no it's it's back coca-cola tastes weird and that's about the only thing that's changed since since then you have like some really long-term effects might not be as uh, yeah i mean it's it's not like severe just kind of i don't even know if coca-cola i just don't remember it's just, it's weird. It just seems like it tastes bad. But yeah. in, anyways, moved to Texas, got COVID. Uh, and then, um, yeah, we didn't, it was just like, it didn't, it didn't happen here. Um, and then we went to Plano up in uh, near DFW and it was a little more, it was a little, a little bit more uh, uh, intense up there. But even then it was like, you know, people just really didn't care. They just really, no one really cared. People were fucking dropping like flies too. And they just didn't care. It was weird, but um, yeah, it never really 
it never really uh, affected the local areas of Texas where I live. I would look on the news and be like, what the f- – everything's yeah. just normal. Yeah. Well, even on the border here, we always got like news from like what happened in New York State, and it was like New York State was like mass grave number three hundred and twenty, yeah. like just yeah. is being dug Fucking up. And we're insane. Like, it must be f-ed up in the U.S. I right know. now. Christ, I know it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I just you know I try yeah. to keep my family as safe as possible and make everyone as do as healthy healthy habits as they could during all of it, and especially my yeah. grandparents. But you know, I I didn't lose anyone. My whole extended family ever where no one no one. Uh, yeah, my family unlucky. tree started dropping like f-ing flies, unfortunately, because really? of this coat. Yeah, unfortunately, it was a fucking. It was like, oh, one month somebody dies, and you're like, oh, that's like, oh, another month somebody's already gone. That's and crazy. There were some family members who had like other issues, like cancer. So like, f-ing, right, you had a mix of like COVID and then like cancer, and sometimes it's like, you like we didn't even know what the hell somebody died from because like the the cause of death was like. Because even the doctor was like, I guess it must have been COVID. Like, that might have been the thing. So, you know, it got written off as a COVID situation. I think the most painful part about it was not being able to see anybody because that was a period where I had my appendix blown up. So, like, my mom couldn't come in and see me because, like, all of it, like, they had it literally locked off. Um, So it was like all of us were getting, like, PCR tested every day. So I'm sitting there, like, in recovering and, like, every fucking day, like, somebody comes in and sticks this jab right up my nose. And I'm like, that feels fun you know what's crazy uh, you think about um you think about covid and um the pandemic and mm -hmm. how it it was saying like 10 percent of us are going to die or whatever the number was right that might be wrong and uh when you look at the landscape of youtube and all the youtubers only one person died basherverse that's it oh from covid yeah yeah no one, man, that was a- not a single like celebrity or star or YouTuber or content creator. A lot of old people. Uh, That's pretty much it. Died of COVID. Yeah. Not one, just Basher. Well, just Basher. Yeah. So there is one, but it's wild. Yeah. It was a, it was an interesting and yeah that was a that, that was a that was a wild time hopefully we don't relive it again uh, i think i'm in oopies camp if it happens again i'm fucking, i'm rejecting all of it i'm moving up into the goddamn mountain yeah well Call i'd rather just day. get it i don't give a guys thanks for <laughs> having <laughs> me on the show i mean we yeah, talked no, uh, for real. we talked about death like three times four times maybe <laughs> it's pretty no, normal no, no. listen 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 i think the most engaging conversation was how different me and you believe in post-apocalypse you're out there starting a fucking, I'm the president of the United States. I'm a fucking bandit. Caleb, what are you? Dude, I, I'm, I'm, I have a team of highly trained warriors that are willing to die for me already. Uh, and not really, that's a lie. But I do have a team of friends who are willing to, we're, we're willing to die you made for, it sound for like a you good got a cause. You Waco for a second. I'm like, hold on. I mean, I don't want to say I'm wearing white linen pants, but I am, literally. Uh, Caleb, we, will you be my general? sure <laughs> there we go there yeah. you go that's yeah, yeah. So, I'll, that's I'll be so the, fucking, I'll be the I, warlord i literally have like like i would say i have like six weeks to attack both of you guys before your fake it and make it strategy <laughs> actually comes in i don't know man day one i'm i'm mounting my uh my browning m2 on my roof so uh and that's a machine gun that's a 50 caliber machine gun and uh so i can't believe you bought that at a hardware store Texas i did State i is- I didn't, I didn't buy that in Texas. I bought that in Virginia. Wait, you yeah. bought it in Virginia? You I bought that in Virginia. You that across state lines? I felt like a criminal. I felt legitimately like a criminal. It's, it's, it is legal. It's not illegal. It's just a rifle. It's just a simple rifle. Damn. Um, that shoots giant bullets. But uh, yeah, I have a gun for every scenario. I have a lot of food. I have a lot of ammo. I have a lot of secrets. Dude, what right? the scenario are you going to have where you need a fucking Browning M2 like 50 cal bmg basically i mean it's just uh it's just uh you know like a deterrent right what are you afraid the fucking m1 abrams is gonna drive up in the bus <laughs> that buy? wouldn't do anything to that. The, the problem with having <laughs> that much uh that much guns and that much crazy shit is people are gonna want your guns they're gonna really right. want your guns yeah i'm gonna yeah. want your guns I'm yeah, gonna people, try to spin people are gonna try you. to well, rob you i know but i have guns though that's the that's the crazy thing is I could just shoot them, but the uh, I have a lot. I have a lot of different types of guns. Um, mostly a lot of long range stuff. I have a gun called a Mark Thirteen, uh, with a with a uh, an in- it's integrally suppressed. It's a three hundred Win Mag, and it can shoot. It can shoot like mile pretty Damn. easily. And it was used in. Uh, it has a Schmidt and Bender scope on it, and it was. It has the uh, the mil- I forget what the ID is for from the military, but it has it scraped off. So it's like an actual like uh spec ops sniper rifle that was used in 
um, <laughs> interesting stuff like that. Well, anyways, we had a great time with Kim. We had a great uh, episode. We talk about a lot of stuff. We uh, we know that no matter what, at the end of the day, there is one winner in the post apocalypse, and it's going to be me. It's going to be me because <laughs> you guys you guys trust people way too fucking easily. I don't. I don't trust people. Yeah, but you're also not going to be a bandit. What We're is your bandit all name? The guns. My yeah, come on, Ludo. What's your bandit oh, name? The some ordinary bandits. The, oh, the some oh ordinary God. bandits. Yeah, dude. The sob. Or, yeah, dude. My fellow you. Americans, <laughs> we need to band together to get rid of these some ordinary bandits. We need to. See, by the, see, by the time you finish the name, we're already rolling into the city <laughs> with our fucking guns firing, you know? But, True. uh,. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, hope you all enjoyed today's episode. If you uh, like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it, dislike it. Check out Oompaville's channel, my channel, and most importantly, Keemstar's uh, channel, Keemstar's Happy Punch, and of course, the Lol Cow Podcast. Do you have actually a channel for that already? Uh, Is it... I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm so hands okay. off on that project. I'm letting those guys kind of do it, and I'm just promoting them when they come out with episodes. But Twitter. Twitter's a big one. Follow us on Happy Punch on Twitter. Follow Drommeler on Twitter. And I'm, most of you probably already follow me, Keemstar. Um, but um, as far as content, all we do is Snapchat videos, people. That's it. All right. Perfect. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, hope you all enjoyed today's episode. We are out. Thank you.